Hey, what's going on guys? Six Max here, and in today's video, I'm actually bringing you guys my first ever commentary on the Volt channel. So I wanna start off this video first by saying thanks to everyone at Volt for giving the opportunity to join the team. I really appreciate it, and I'm definitely looking forward to working with everyone in Volt. They all seem like a good group of guys for sure, and obviously Volt's gameplay speak for themselves. Every single gameplay you'll see on this channel will absolutely blow you away, I can promise you guys that. But, uh, but with that being said, you guys, in this gameplay here, you'll see a triple nuclear. That's right, you guys, you heard me right. A triple nuke, Black Ops 2 hardpoint gameplay here on the map Hijacked, brought to you by Voltagene, who's an absolute beast. He ends up finishing with a ridiculous score of 122 and 7, which is just insane. He was using the AN-94 with the UAV, the Guardian, and the Orbital VSAT as his killstreaks. If you guys haven't checked out Voltagene's channel yet, definitely do so. This guy brings you gameplay after gameplay that will literally make your mouth drop, so go check him out. Down in the description, there will also be a link to my channel as well, you guys. I upload Call of Duty videos every single day with all the latest news, updates, and some funny and also some serious commentaries as well. So go take a look if you guys are interested. But uh, but anyways, you guys, I'm not here necessarily to talk about the gameplay. I'm actually here to talk about a topic that a lot of you guys will be facing really, really soon. Maybe even this month because it's August at the time I'm recording this video. And for some of you that are younger, you might face this in the future. And even if you're older than college age, maybe you can reflect on this and maybe you'll have a laugh and maybe agree with a few things I say. Or maybe you'll disagree, which is okay too. So what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is how to succeed in college. And I'm not just talking about academically with your grades, you guys. I'm also talking about just how to balance your life in college have a good time, do well, and leave with the best experience you possibly can. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk about college like I'm your mom or your dad or something like that, but I'll give you a real perspective from someone who's graduated college and who's in his 20s who can definitely relate to the situations you guys are in nowadays. So this is going to be a few thoughts about this. If I talked about everything, this commentary would honestly last an hour or so. So I'm going to touch on a few things, but I hope you guys enjoy the video. So let's get right into it. So, so first off, the first point I want to make is when you guys start college, don't go into college trying to do that whole, you know, graduate in two years type thing. Sit down, look around, enjoy the moment you're in because it can be some of the best years of your entire life. I know I had some of the best years and the best memories so far in my life when I was in college and hopefully what I'll tell you guys will help you guys so you don't have to learn everything the hard way, kind of like I did. But uh, one thing about college, you guys, is it's definitely a time in your life you can try new things. Try some things out you'd normally be scared to death of, and you'd be surprised how much you find out about yourself. Also in college, date whoever you want. Find out uh, what you like, but really importantly, a word of advice for you guys is do not stay with your high school sweetheart when you go to college, especially if that person lives in another state. I know, I know, all of us have heard of, uh, or most of us have heard of, you know, people marrying their high school sweetheart, but honestly, that's the exception to the rule. Most of the time, you just end up worrying about what they're doing, who they're hooking up with, and they'll be constantly hassling you about the same kind of stuff, especially if you're just a freshman. You know, it's a time to be free with, all, you know, without any kind of drama in your life so trust me when I say these things because personally I've been in that type of situation I've seen and I've seen so many people go through something similar and it's way better to go into your freshman year as a single you know guy or girl so so a big tip here you guys as well do not schedule an 8 a.m. class on a Monday morning trust me that's a huge freshman mistake way too many people make in college for the most part you get to hand pick your classes so why would you pick a time like an early Monday morning class or for that matter a Friday evening class You'll thank yourself in the end if you don't, because if you do, you'll just end up missing way too many classes anyways, and your grades will just suffer. So, so take that to heart, you guys. Come on. Another thing to think about, I know some schools in the U.S. require students to stay in dorms as a freshman, and some don't, but if you do and you have a meal plan, make sure you take advantage of the meal plan. Don't waste it, and there's two things I mean by wasting it. First is don't waste it by using every meal on terrible food, like you eat that, you know, that day-old pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's something called the Freshman 15 for a reason. Look it up. But when you guys go back home for Christmas, you don't want to be that guy that, you know, now that has a tire around his waist. So... So, I mean, so eat a sandwich from time to time or, or something else healthy. This is really hard to do in the dorms because, you know, of all the ice cream sandwiches and the fried food that's right in your face. But just do it, you guys. Trust me. Second thing I mean when I say waste is make sure you use those two or three meals a day that you have on your plan. I've seen way too many people act like they're sick of the food, so they go out and grab fast food like five times a week instead. So just suck it up, you guys. Eat what's in the cafeteria because your wallet will thank you later when you're looking to grab some cash for whatever you want to do on the weekend. Plus, meal plans are crazy expensive, so you might as well use it. 
Speaking of how much things cost, before you get into college, I know it's hard to understand really how much it costs because a lot of you have never even seen a few thousand dollars before, but take a step back and just kind of realize how much this whole college thing is going to cost and, and don't waste it. If you're going to pay this much for something or your parents are going to pay for it, even if you're taking out student loans for it, you might as well learn a little something out of it and kind of just prioritize your time a little bit and, you know, do a little study and at least pass your classes. The last thing you want to do, trust me, is pay two grand for a class, fail it, and then have to pay another two grand to take it again, especially especially if that's a terrible class, just get it over with and do as good as you can. Also, while we're talking about classes a little bit, when you find a major, you guys just run with it. The more time you spend switching your majors, the more money it'll cost you and the more time as well. If you switch a major partly through it, it'll literally cost you thousands of dollars. It's not worth it. Just stick with your major. And if you really want to do something different, go get a master's in that thing anyways. You'll be better off in the end. For example, if you want to be a lawyer, it doesn't even matter what your degree was in. You can go to law school. Also, as far as friends go, don't be a flaky, guys. That stuff gets around quick. And believe me, the last thing you want to be labeled as is, is a flake. So if you commit to hanging out with someone, just do it. If you don't feel like doing anything one night, just, just don't answer your phone. You know, as long as you didn't make those, make those plans ahead of time and, you know, give them a call back the next day. That's always way better than flaking. Next thing, you guys, don't start off every conversation with, so are you a freshman? I've hung out around more colleges than I could possibly count, and you can't imagine how many times I've overheard people saying that, or they've said it to me, especially though if you're trying to talk to a girl, that's not a good way to break the ice at all. I mean, if that's literally the only thing you can think of, then that's better than nothing, but come up with something a little more clever next time. And, uh, and one of my last tips I want to give you guys today in this video is do yourself a favor and dress comfortable for school. You might as well. The most important thing in class anyways is taking care of business there. No one really cares what you're wearing as long as you don't look like a homeless person. I studied business and economics in college and you guys wouldn't believe how many people in my classes literally wore a suit every day or even just like a shirt and tie. I'm like, look around guys. No recruiters coming in anytime soon. The only thing that matters is doing well in that class really. Also keep a good relationship with your teachers, you guys. You won't believe how many times you'll need their help whether it's about your grade or years later when you'll you know maybe you'll need a recommendation for grad school or something like that you'll you'll realize most of them are actually way cool people as well so I mean that's definitely one thing I wish I would have done a little bit different in college if I could go back and for my last and final tip for this video, you guys, it's a big one, and it's one a lot of you might not have thought of, but hold off on buying all of the recommended materials for your classes, you guys, until you actually see what you'll need when you're in the class. A lot of the time when you sign up for a class, the teacher will have this list of the stuff you'll need, like books and everything like that, and I'm not even kidding. Most of the time, you don't even end up using half that stuff. And guys, I'm not talking about a $10 paperback book here. College books can cost you anywhere between $100 and, I mean, sometimes even $200. This especially sucks because you'll hear that they'll buy the the book back after the semester, which sounds awesome, right? Well, not so fast. There's a catch. So remember that $150 book you just bought a few months ago? Well, yeah, they'll buy it back from you, but for $15 or even better, the publisher will change a couple pictures in, and now there's technically a new edition, so they won't even buy it back at all. So now you have a brand new $150 algebra book that's sitting in your room now for nothing. So wait until you know for sure what books you'll need in class, you guys, and also buy used books at the bookstore or online every time you can. Trust me. But uh, but yeah, there you guys have it. That about wraps up this video here, you guys. I couldn't talk about everything in this video because there's only so much time, but I'll be posting some more college tips and I'll have a new two-part series on my channel about noob mistakes that every college freshman makes. But, uh, but yeah, you guys, again, that was Voltagene's gameplay in the background on Black Ops 2 where he went 122 and seven with a triple nuke. Just insane. If we could hit 150 likes on this video, you guys, that would be amazing. I'd appreciate that so much. Let's show some love for Voltagene getting that triple nuke. Such a nice gameplay by him so make sure you guys go check him out and again you guys i'm six max and my channel will be in the description so what do you guys think now that ghost is almost over which game did you like more call of duty ghost or black ops 2 let me know in the comments down below but anyways you guys i'm out of here and i will see you all in my next video bye